In this video, we will show how the stresses act in castellated and cellular beams due to global shear and bending moment. We will also show all the possible ways the section can fail due to bending and shear and how to evaluate the strength for each failure mode. Virendil bending is caused by the transfer of shear force across the openings in order to be consistent with the rate of change of bending moment along the beam. Virendil failure occurs by the formation of plastic hinges at four locations around the opening in regions of high shear. The global shear force passing through the opening creates a localized bending moment in the top and bottom tees, known as the Virendil moment. The global bending moment and shear forces change along the length of the beam. Consequently, it is necessary to examine the interaction of global shear and moment at each web opening along the entire length of the beam. By examining the interaction of the global moment and shear at each opening, a critical opening can be identified. The global shear and moment interact to produce an overall stress. Therefore, the most efficient use of the beam is in a situation where the maximum global shear and moment occur away from each other, such as a simply supported beam with a uniform load. There are three steps in examining Virendil bending. First, calculate axial forces due to the global bending moment and Virendil moment due to the global shear in top and bottom tees at each opening that result from external loads. Then, calculate the available axial and flexural strength of the top and bottom tees using chapter D E and F of the AISC specification. Then, check the interaction of the axial force and Virendil moment using the equations in chapter H of the AISC specification. The axial force is a function of the global bending moment in the beam. It is similar to a cord force in a truss. The axial force is calculated by dividing the global moment in the beam by the distance between the centroids of the top and bottom tees, D effective. The Virendil moment is calculated by dividing the global shear force in the beam between the top and bottom tees and multiplying that shear force by a moment arm. If the top and bottom tees are identical, then the shear can be divided equally between the top and bottom tees. If the top and bottom tees are not identical, as is the case in asymmetric sections, the shear force should be proportioned between the top and bottom tees based on the areas of the tees relative to each other. For castellated sections, the moment arm for calculating the Virendil moment is one half the width of the top of the opening E divided by 2. For cellular beams, the moment arm should be taken as D0 divided by 4, where A net is the combined area of the top and bottom tees. The nominal compressive strength, Pn, is the lowest value obtained based on the applicable limit states of flexural buckling and flexural torsional buckling. The following design assumptions are made. From section E3 of the AISC specification for members without slender elements, the nominal compressive strength for flexural buckling is calculated using the following equation. The strength should be reduced by a reduction factor phi taken as 0.9. The critical stress FCR is determined as follows. Where LC over R is the greatest of KXL over RX and KYL over RY. If the T's include slender compression elements, AISC specification section E7 is used to calculate FCR. The elastic stress F sub E is calculated using the Euler buckling equation. Flexural torsional buckling use the same equations as flexural buckling 
with the exception of the elastic stress, where Cw is the warping constant, which can be taken as 1 for T sections. G is the shear modulus of elastic steel. J is the torsional constant of the T section. R0 is the polar radius of gyration about the shear center. X0 and Y0 are the coordinates of the shear center with respect to the centroid. The shear center of the T section can be assumed to be located at the point where the flange center line meets the stem center line, and thus X0 is zero. The tensile strength of the T-section is equal to the yield strength multiplied by the gross area of the T-section reduced by a factor of 0.9. The flexural strength of the top and bottom T-sections must be determined and compared to the required flexural strength to support the Virendil design moment with an unbraced length equal to the length of the T-section. The nominal flexural strength is the lowest value obtained according to the limit states of yielding, lateral torsional buckling, flange local buckling, and local buckling of T stems. For yielding, the strength is equal to MP. MP has different values depending on whether the stem is in tension or compression. MY can be calculated as such with S sub X being the elastic section modulus and Z sub X being the plastic section modulus. For lateral torsional buckling checks, the first step is to calculate the bracing length limits L sub P and L sub R and compare it to the unbraced length. If the unbraced length is less than or equal to LP, the case of lateral torsional buckling does not apply and we can proceed to checking other failure modes. If the unbraced length is between LP and LR, or is equal to LR, then it is linearly interpolated between MP and MY. If the unbraced length is greater than LR, then it is calculated as follows. With B having different signs depending on whether the stem is in tension or compression. For flange local buckling, we need to check the limiting slenderness values for the flange from AISC specification table B 4.1b. The slenderness is compared to the limit values and thus it can be determined whether the flange is compact, non-compact or slender. If the flange is compact, the limit of flange local buckling does not apply. If the flange is non-compact, the minimum of the following two values is taken. If the flange is slender, the bending strength is calculated as follows. The nominal flexural strength for local buckling in flexural compression is determined as follows. The critical stress is determined as follows based on the slenderness of the T-stems, where Tw is the thickness of the T-stems. The minimum MN is then chosen from all possible failure modes under bending and reduced by the factor phi to calculate the available flexural strength of the T section. The interaction of flexure and axial forces in top and bottom T's constrained to bend about a geometric axis X and or Y is limited by AISC specification equations H1-1A and H1-1B, where PR and MR are the required axial and bending strengths, respectively, and PC and MC are the available axial and bending strengths, respectively. The available strengths are the minimum calculated reduced strengths based on the previously shown calculations. Web Post buckling is caused by the horizontal shear force passing through the web post. The ultimate strength of the web post is governed by one of two modes. Either flexural failure caused by the development of a plastic hinge in the web post or buckling failure of the web post. 
The mode of failure is dependent on the geometry and thickness of the web post. Separate checks are made for the top and bottom tees which may have different thicknesses and available strengths. For castellated beams, the buckling capacity of the web posts is calculated using equations that have been developed through destructive testing. This set of equations defines the buckling capacity of the web post as a percentage of its plastic bending moment, m sub p, which is a function of E, B, T, W, and F, Y. The buckling capacity as a percentage of m p is a function of 2 H divided by E. The destructive testing that was completed was for beams with the angle of the hexagonal cut as 45 degrees and 60 degrees. One set of equations was developed for theta is equal to 45 degrees and another set for theta is equal to 60 degrees. It is not permissible to use these equations for theta less than 43 degrees or for theta greater than 62 degrees. It is, however, acceptable to design beams with web posts having an angle theta between 45 and 60 degrees by interpolating between the two equation sets and applying a larger factor of safety to the allowable web post bending moment. Also, the equations are only applicable for E over TW between the values of 10 and 30 and 2H over E less than or equal to 8. It is typically most efficient to maintain an angle theta between 58 degrees and 62 degrees. For cellular beams, a similar set of equations was developed through destructive testing. There are three values, C1, C2, and C3, which are functions of the properties of the web post that are used to calculate the buckling capacity of the web post as a function of the web post elastic capacity at a critical section 0.9 r. These two equations are the result of detailed nonlinear finite element studies and only applicable for the following limits of s over d naught and dg over d naught. For castellated beams, the horizontal shear is calculated by subtracting the difference in axial forces in two adjacent openings, and the moment in the posts is then calculated as follows. And in cellular beams, the moment is calculated as follows. As in all flexural members, horizontal and vertical shear forces are resisted by the web of castellated and cellular beams. In open web beams, the shear becomes more critical for two reasons. First, the vertical shear must be resisted by the net section of the member. Second, horizontal shear that passes down the midline of the beam web becomes magnified at each web post due to the adjacent web openings. Vertical shear should be checked using the global shear force calculated at each opening and resisted by the net section at web openings or the gross section at web posts. The horizontal shear force VH from the web post buckling calculation can be used to check horizontal shear. The available horizontal shear strength is then taken as follows. The available vertical shear strength must be calculated at the net section as well as the gross section. In both cases, AISC specification section G2 should be used. At the net section, the shear force should be proportioned between the top and bottom tees based on the areas of the tees relative to each other. For the gross section, H over TW should be calculated using the clear distance between flanges minus the fillet and DT used for the net section. The term KV should be taken as 5.34 for the gross section and as 1.2 for the stem of the T-shape at the net section. At the gross section, H over TW is calculated as such, then CV1 is calculated as such. 
at the net section, h over tw is calculated as such, then cv2 is calculated as such. For both the net and gross sections, the strength reduction factor is determined as follows. The nominal shear strengths are then determined as shown. Lateral torsional buckling, flange local buckling, and tension flange yielding should be checked in castellated and cellular beams in accordance with AISC specification, Chapter F, sections F2 through F5, similar to ordinary wide flange beams. The gross section properties can be used when checking for lateral torsional buckling. To know how to use the AISA specification chapter F, please watch the video shown in the card at the end of this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you for watching.